Hi, I'm Brent Adams. I direct Warming Center program and the Footbridge Services Center. I also have been chair of the Santa Cruz Coalition on Homelessness. Uh, I've also advocated for transitional camps, also known as sanctuary camps in Santa Cruz since 2013, quite a long time. Uh, Footbridge Services uh, does a lot of things in Santa Cruz. Uh, storage for everybody that comes in, laundry. We do showers on Sunday, Saturday, Friday. Also, donation materials, pretty much everything you can think of from blankets, hypothermia gear to Q-tips and fingernail clippers. Um, and laundry. Uh, Footbridge Services really is scalable for anybody who can need those services and get to our facility. Uh, we we got gotcha. you. Warming Center has been a pop-up that's been operating since 2014. Opens on the most cold and, and uh, wet nights of the year. Generally, an average uh, 20, hour, 20 uh, nights a winter because it's volunteer oriented, community supported. We don't get any sustaining uh, funding from the city or county. These are programs that we as community members decided to do to uh, fill in the void for the national paradigm, the local paradigm uh, that's called permanent support housing. Now, I wanna give this little talk. It's something that I do uh, on a semi-regular basis. I haven't really given it in public in a while. It, some of it's dated, it's all right. This is my homelessness paradigm talk, the lay of the land, so to speak. Uh, it's very confusing in uh, Santa Cruz and in lots of cities like this. That's why this, this talk might be uh, applicable in many cities on the Western coast. Uh, so I'm going to write on the board. I'm, uh, unfortunately, I have the, not the good camera for this sort of vlog. It's my iPhone 12 and it has it's a selfie mode so I can see. Um, but uh, just bear with me. Uh, hopefully you'll get something out of this and learn a little bit. If you're not happy with what I'm saying, or you have something to add or um, rebut. Do that in the comments. This is the YouTube video um, and we'll be happy to have a dialogue with you. And then uh, let's... Uh, let's advance this conversation into something uh, more appropriate. Uh, what we're talking about here is homelessness and who really is in the driver's seat. Uh, so it starts with the federal government, right? Um, bear with me here. Federal government, USA, uh, gives lots of money, millions, millions, billions, trillions. Can you see that? I think you can. Um, through the Department of Housing and Urban Development, the HUD, right? And how does that money, well, uh, it started in the Great Society, I think that was what it was called, um, LBJ. Uh, back then, uh, they were giving millions and millions of dollars uh, through the HUD for programs for people for poverty, um, low income, um, I think single mothers, things like that, uh, welfare. Uh, but homelessness in this case, and we're at less than 3% adjusted uh, of spending from back then. So now all the county, states, uh, nonprofits are fighting over those scraps. How does uh, Santa Cruz get that money? We call it continuum of care districts. Um, and it's not really city or county. They can be multiple counties. But uh, our local one is called, called the HAP, HAP, Homeless Action Partnership. Who's the HAP? It's chaired by the county didn't used to be sorry i'm going to pretend to write and you're going to pretend to to read okay let's play that game uh we have an agreement here it's chaired by the county and on the board is the uh, cities of santa cruz the municipal corporations of santa cruz watsonville uh capitola and uh who are we missing here scotts valley and that is who controls it and mainly mainly the counties in the driver's seat most appropriately though of course they have the uh department they have a, a um, human services counties uh, are really focused on the people while the cities are typically the municipal corporations that we call cities focus on you know police fire plumbing garbage lights roads things like that so the counties look at san francisco and uh, uh, the city and the county occupy exactly the same space um and um and one does is responsible for something and the others so locally the county is responsible for homelessness uh, it's interesting that we focus so much on Santa Cruz, the city. Uh, so they get that money. And how do they get that money? Well, they have to do a couple of things to get the money from the HUD. Uh, one is a point in time count. We call it the pit count. I know a little bit about that because I did it twice. I was really curious. That first time I had to count 
they give you three or four hours. You go out in teams. Uh, it's very exciting at first. Um, I think applied survey uh, resources or something, applied survey uh, uh, is a local community, uh, uh, a Santa Cruz organization that works nationally to help uh, uh, continuity of care districts with their point in time count. It's a two, every two years, biannual, uh, we have to go out and count the people. And it's not really a data set that really tells us a lot about the people who sleep outside. Uh, but uh, so my experience, I uh, chose with uh, two other people to count all the people from uh, Western Avenue out on the west side of Santa Cruz all the way out to Waddell, uh, Waddell Creek and Waddell Beach. It's a, that's, what is that, 15 miles, um, something like that. Uh, and then from uh, Empire, um, uh, uh, from Highway 1 all the way to Empire Grade. And we had about three hours to count the people, all the cars, all the people on the beaches, all the people in the, um, the natural uh, inlets, those, those canyon lands. And the woods all the way up to Empire Grade. So that really taught me that that is a bullshit count. There's no way that we could have counted that many people. Maybe in a week we could have done it. Um, there were so many people in cars. And also, by the way, um, as we were counting, people were starting to, to move their cars. People t tend to get up. So it's really hard. Uh, one time, a former city council person, Ryan Coonerty said, yeah, it's kind of like bullshit, but it's through that filter of bullshit every year that we can determine whether it's a, the count is higher or lower. The number is probably not correct, but whether there's a swing upward or downward could be uh, maybe seen through that. Additionally, I hope you can see all this. Um, we have to do the a 10-year plan. Uh, let's see, I've got the last 10-year plan here. We'll be talking a little bit about that. The 10-year plan, uh, the one from 2013 to uh, 2003 to 2013 that I was first aware of was called the 10 year plan to end homelessness. Spoiler alert, we did not end homelessness. That's why this one has a little uh, more interesting language. Uh, all in, toward a home for every county resident. Toward a home, very soft language there, toward a home. Uh, the Santa Cruz County Community Strategic Plan to Prevent. Uh, reduce and eventually end homelessness. And that's what we're going to talk about. Ending homelessness. Um, I first came at, and by the way, uh, I, my name is in here. I did take part in this uh, process. Let me see if you can see that. Brent Adams, community volunteer. I was there for the full ride. I was trying to get some of my ideas uh, uh, and, and be a part of the conversation. Was not allowed to do that. Really what we saw happening here was... Um, my first volley into uh, homelessness, I'd been an activist for years, a, a homeless activist, not really. I'd learned really kind of what, what that was and how l little effect I might have had and maybe even a damaging effect over the years, yelling at city council, marching on city hall, uh, marching downtown, uh, being involved through the 90s and early 2000s with protest camps uh, with Robert Norris and Becky Johnson and others through the years up to Peace Camp 2010, finally Occupy Santa Cruz. And then my exploration uh, into the homeless space of the northern coast, uh, trying to look at things that might be working up there. So there was a, a, a big seminar at Cabrillo called, uh, it was for, there was the first uh, outing of Smart Solutions to Homelessness. And they were letting us know about the new 180, 180 program, which is the local uh, uh, experience, expression of, house, of the national program of Housing First. It was a program called 1000 Homes, and the local one was 180, 180. We're going to have to give 180 people a 180 degree turn uh, into housing. And they had a big banner up there. I was welcome to, be, uh, to, to, to join, and I had some ideas, again, I had been, re after Occupy Santa Cruz, I, I had seen at Occupy Santa Cruz dozens of people who normally sleep outside. In fact, the nearly the entire homeless population camped with us. Downtown was uh, clean. The, we didn't have people sleeping in doorways the entire time Occupy was there because we ended up hosting all those people. And I got to see through the daily meeting, through the food pr uh, process, through the uh, different pro projects that we were involved in, people really started to actually get some grounding and... Um, you, I saw transformation within people's lives. Yes, yeah, some people, some activists and other people who were with us started drugs for the first time, and that's a big conversation. But I was committed after seeing that that, that a camp, an encampment model can heal people 
uh, and can heal a community. So uh, ever since then, I've been committed to that. Uh, where are we going here? So at, uh, at the big uh, Cabrillo Festival at a symposium uh, in 2013 that was Housing First's uh, expression of, uh, no, sorry, not Housing First, um, Smart Solutions to Homelessness, they had a big banner that said Ending Homelessness. Ending homelessness, that's, that's, a, that's audacious. I, my ears were pricked. I was like, what's going on here? And the more I learned about it, the, the, the less I was convinced. It was mainly focusing on getting a, a few people housed. Uh, but what about everybody else? And this was uh, really uh, letting us know that the housing first concept within the country is more about defunding shelters, defunding prog programs in order to focus on housing. Uh, and getting people into housing. We'll talk about that in a bit. So a 10-year plan. Uh, that 10-year plan actually has been um, uh, superseded now by a new plan called Housing for a Healthy Santa Cruz. You'll notice it's home. Ha the homelessness plans are toward a home. Housing for a Healthy Santa Cruz. Um, so um, let's see. So there's home. Uh, for a healthy, healthy, uh, and then uh, we are now new now have new programs called uh, housing now and um, rehousing wave, and I'm gonna uh, of course I'm just gonna be going through this uh, a lot of this is I'm gonna miss some stuff and I'll be d looping back. Hopefully, uh, by the end of this, we'll make some sense. Um, I think everything's... Uh... So the way I like to talk about this is um, this... We'll separate this into thirds. This is a national paradigm. Uh, with national paradigms, um, you know, of course, we've had homelessness since the 80s in, in, in this country. And California's been really difficult. And they've, they've been working at this long before me, long before us. Uh, and long before the uh, uh, people in the city and county had their jobs, um, and it's been difficult, uh, you know, shelters, trying to uh, shelter people. And I think what they discovered was, you know, sheltering doesn't necessarily uh, uh, remove the homelessness. It, it might even perpetuate it in, in the way we look at it. So uh, it's understandable that, um, that the federal government would come up with this concept called <laughs> that's ridiculous. Let's, oh, that's beautiful. Uh, housing first. And that's the paradigm we live in now. Housing first. Locally, it's called permanent supported housing. Supported housing. Um, permanent. That's that we're going to be talking about that. Housing first. Um, so the way it used to be it was the, the idea is that you know, you'd get somebody into a shelter and try to minister their, to their basic needs, getting them, get them into transitional housing, and then finally uh, try to get them into housing. Uh, that's a long uh, uh, path, and uh, there's a lot of failure, failures along the way. The housing first concept is we're going to take you from the street, get you directly into housing, and then with wraparound services, permanent support, then we're going to uh, focus on your, ba your, your what all the things that might have uh, contributed to your homelessness. The idea is that housing eliminates homelessness, and that might be technically true. Uh, let's see. But the federal government, ha there's no funding for housing. It's the big problem, the big challenge. Locally, we're not building any new housing. Um, with housing... Uh, Housing now, it's a function of this new program called the Rehousing Wave in Santa Cruz. Uh, I have some notes here that we can talk about. Um, let's see, in March 25th, I think the Rehousing Wave within the county was started in March. Um, we have some new people in the county and in the city. W uh, one person named Robert Ra Ratner, and I forgot the other Robert's uh, last name. Uh, they're from Alameda, and they had some success with Housing First there. I think that's because they had some available housing. Uh, here, the idea is all in, you know, the reason it's called all in is because we, all of us, are expected to be part of this program. They're not building new housing because they want us to open our back bedroom 
and rent it to somebody who sleeps outside or has been in a COVID shelter or a motel. You know, a lot of these people are ready to be housed, but uh, the the idea that we're going to put somebody who is formerly homeless, homeless into one of these very expensive, like let's just look at our housing market. Uh, it's extremely expensive. If you look at Craigslist, the cost for a, a, a bedroom, a cost for a studio, uh, or an apartment. It's astronomical. This is the most expensive housing market in the world currently, even above uh, places in New York. The idea that um, a landlord typically wants to rent to a dot comer or a college student, um, that they would forego that. And, you know, there's incentives that these programs are offering. The rehousing wave, uh, $8 million. It's a federal program, $8 million coming for the federal government. Um, interestingly, a uh, new county supervisor, uh, uh, Mano Koenig, said, I'd rather be paying people who are building housing for housing supply itself rather than, than paying a bunch of people sitting behind desks, helping people look for housing that simply doesn't exist. That's very astute. Um, so we're not building that housing. We're paying we're, the, the, uh, these programs, the federal government, these dollars is for housing programs to get people in the house and we call it the per, uh, the pathway to housing uh let's do let's let's maybe draw what that looks like now it's not appropriate over here a uh, little pathway in fact let's make it a bridge here's housing over here right and here's a person who sleeps outside or in homelessness the idea we put them on the pathway to housing and uh and that's what all these but there's no funding for this there's only funding for the bridge and extreme amount of funding and to the point point where 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 funding rains down where it, where it falls programs pool up only to catch that funding exclusively regardless of the actual experience of homelessness which far extends that in fact we'll see we're seeing programs change their mission statement change their entire mission reformulate even change the name of their organization just specifically to play this game, to catch that money uh, and to, you know, of course, they believe it. We believe, you know, how to end homelessness, get them housing. It makes great sense. It's what the federal government what wants to support. It's what the county is involved in. But what we're seeing is homelessness mushrooming out of control and up from San Diego all the way to Seattle, all the way out to Salt Lake City. Um, it's not housing first is not working in any city. You might hear it's working here and there. Uh, it's mainly because they're able to identify a set of uh, chronically homeless uh, people, take a, se a set of money uh, like in Salt Lake City during an extremely uh, cold winter. They counted some the people who are only in the shelters, identified a small number of people, helped with the Mormon church, built a program and then called it good. But even the Continuum of Care District supervisor there said it didn't happen, actually. There's far more chronically homeless people that existed outside of that count. So uh, the, the p painful thing that we find here is this is Santa Cruz County. Im imagine San Benito County, Santa Clara County, Monterey County, and down and down it goes. Um, the, 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 the dozens, the hundreds of uh, uh, Continuum of Care Districts spending that money, not on housing, but on the bridge to housing. Um, and then imagine all the nonprofits who are, let's, let's make a new one. The nonprofits uh, who are trying to vie for that money, um, uh, very, uh, high, you know, appropriately paid administrator and buildings, appropriately paid administrator and buildings, all this redundant, and they don't work together very well. And it's just, it just that's where all the money goes. And it's a golden bridge to nowhere and i think that's very a very audacious and appropriate claim but i'll back that up um let's just say uh, uh firstly uh and k ksbw um kate katie fanton uh uh in june uh, 3rd said we're really relying on the good good heartedness of the santa cruz community to help us do this um we're relying on you to rent your bedrooms. Uh, in August 11th, uh, the, in the Sentinel, Robert Ratner said, overall, the rehousing wave uh, teams have reportedly enrolled 140 ha households in the housing finding efforts. 
and had succeeded in housing just 15, only 15 out of 140. He says, I've been incredibly impressed by the, by the work of our staff, mostly doing housing problem solve, solving work, solving work. I hope we can keep it up. Though he says, I'm skeptical. I'm not sure we're going to be able to keep that up. Obviously, our goal is to try to make that the reality going forward. That's the core of what we want to do and work in the next six months. Mainly that what he's saying is uh, it's v extremely unsuccessful. Then the forecasts were way over there. People in Santa Cruz are not uh, 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 renting their rooms in this way. They're not taking the bait. Um, uh, Tom Stagg from uh, and said in the good times, he's a, a, one of the directors over at Housing Matters. Housing Matters used to be Homeless Services Center. Homeless Services Center closed a lot of the services, stopped um, the, the food program, stopped, um, uh, closed the campus. Uh, it's not a day center anymore, like is vastly needed. Um, stopped uh, 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 the winter shelter. We don't have a winter shelter in Santa Cruz anymore. That's another huge conversation. There used to be a winter shelter every single night of the winter for people. Nothing, there's not one shelter bed available tonight this winter in Santa Cruz. And uh, what's up with that? Tom Stag Stagg says, they will work directly with landlords. This is uh, the, the um, uh, housing now, part of the rehousing wave with the county receiving that $8 million. They will work directly with landlords, acting as a liaison between them and the people from the program. They hope this will encourage landlords to look at their clients as prospective, re prospective renters. Stag encouraged local residents who own rentals to contact Housing Matters if they have availability and want to be part of the program. Housing Now will offer rental subsidies when a client moves into housing, Housing Matters will help pay rent and support them with home visits, organizing expenses, and more until they can become self-sufficient. That's all well and good. That's amazing. They'll pay the rent. Okay, there are about 300 housing vouchers that were released by uh, the housing authority that had been locked for, for years. People have been on that waiting list for many, many years. Every once in a while, they open it up, they'll release 20, they'll release 50. And then those people have to find housing on their own. So this money uh, uh, makes, uh, so there's way more housing vouchers available. The problem is there's no housing. Um, they're, they're hiring all of these housing uh, uh, navigators. There's $8 million in the pipe to try to get, uh, incentivize and hire people and get people uh, but what we're not doing is addressing <laughs> this area where, where people are actually sleeping outside um, by the thousands now. All the money, all the energy is mostly going into this housing first, permanent supported housing. And we have some interesting things to say about permanent supported housing. Um, it was a grand jury report in 2022, 20, uh, it's called Homelessness, big problem, little prog progress. Um, and uh, they say about permanent supported housing, lack of permanent supported housing results in a significant compounding of the homeless issue. Supportive services are limited to one year. Permanent supported services are limited to one year. Permanent equals one year. Does that make any sense at all so when they finally do get people into housing that their support only lasts for a year what we're seeing is so many people getting into housing finally after this huge monumental task and that person who's supposed to be supported uh, uh the, the support dries up and they end up largely we're seeing uh, dozens of dozens of people who were formerly housed through housing this this concept back to the street. Um, here's an interesting thing, and I'm still trying to figure out what this means. Uh, according to witness testimony and research, as of 2020, April 2020, the program ha had housed 950 people with at least 350 people, individuals permanently housed. So you, we might remember that banner on Housing uh, uh, Matters sign, 1,000 people housed, but only 350 people all these years later, all these millions, all these programs, all this focus, only 350 people have been permanently housed. That should hit you with a dull, a dull thud. 
while all these thousands of other people are left out. Not a bathroom. You know, I'll, I'll ask that question. This is very snarky. Um, those who know me won't be surprised. What makes us think we're going to be giving free housing for life to people when we don't even offer an appropriate bath, 24-hour bathroom in most of these spaces other than a shitty, disgusting porta potty hmm? I know, because one of my first endeavors into the homeless space was to start the homeless task force, the, the bathroom task force, where we were cleaning a porta potty four days a week because the city porta potty at F F uh, Front and Laurel only got cleaned three or four nights, four days a, a week and left uncleaned um, Thursday night, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, the most busy bar hopping nights. The Warrior Stadium is right across the way. It's meant, it was meant to offer dignity, but it was atrocious. And that was the only thing offered for a little while. But when you really look at the landscape, where are the bathrooms? Where are the camps? Here we're next to Camp Paradise. Sometimes 100 people camped here and not one bathroom. My facility is here. It's an office park. It's not designed to be a public restroom. Let's get let's get through this. And so I really can't offer I, I, I offer bathrooms in an emergency. Here we are, you and I. This is the people of Santa Cruz. Uh, I don't know how how it works. We're right and left for you with on your video screen. But let's just say this is the right politically, right? This is the left. You know, uh, uh, socialists, anarchists, democratic socialists, progressives, uh, liberals moderates, Republicans, uh, Trump people, and r r white supremacists, uh, racists, and shit like that. People over here are racist, too, we've discovered. But um, so over here, typically, people, uh, we, they want to, people to do their time in jail, right? They, uh, they, they want um, more police, more cops on the beat. They want people, they, uh, uh, they don't like uh, syringes around. They want uh, the camps to go away. They want these people to go back wherever they came from, right? Um, as if homelessness doesn't originate everywhere. Um, so we understand some of those. You know, the, the, it, we might not agree with them, but we can understand. We can grow up where they're coming from. Over here, we want uh, harm reduction. Uh, we want... Um, to stop the sweeps, allow people to remain in their camps. We want, instead of police, we want, we would like uh, mental health care professionals and nurses to minister, to go out to talk to people rather than people with uh, guns uh, and continually criminalize people who sleep outside. Uh, but that's the game. All this, oh, we protest homelessness. That's pretty much all we ever do in Santa Cruz. We are protest activists, right? So there's a lot of energy here, a lot of energy here. But that always ends up pulling us in, uh, apart. And so the, most of the people who I say are liberals and moderates in Santa Cruz, they just don't really know what to think. Stop the sweeps. You mean that camp in San Lorenzo Park, we want it to remain? People get confused. Uh, that doesn't make much sense. Have you gone down there? Have you read, heard about the criminalization that's happening there? The rapes, the overdoses. That doesn't, why would we stop the sweeps? We need a more appropriate places. Um, you know, uh, um, we want more cops. That doesn't seem to be solving anything. So the people in the middle really get confused. But what's, what, what I would say is none of this has any knowledge of the paradigm. Nobody has any clue about the FUD funding, FUD, HUD funding, or the continuum of care districts, or housing first. In fact, a lot of people on the left, housing first sounds good to them, and they don't even look into what's happening. So what we propose, and this is, doesn't have to be part of this lecture, but if this is housing up here, uh, and this is homelessness, and the paradigm is imagining that we're going to get some people to make this impossible to make hurdle, right? Um, Storage, laundry, showers, electrical charging, donation materials, uh, bathroom, uh, place to sleep, food, and on it goes. And housing could eclipse most of this, but we learned that the thousand people who were housed, only 350 people remain in permanent supported housing. So it's not true that housing does eclipse all of this stuff. In fact, uh, what, what we're seeing is, so let's just say, in, in Sacramento, in um, Eugene, Oregon, in Portland, I started learning, uh, I met with a bunch of city council members up there, 
I was making a documentary, still unfinished. It was fascinating that I can, I can meet with people in uh, city council members in those large cities, but I can't get a meeting with people here. They don't answer my uh, uh, Donna Myers, um, uh, Martine Watkins, and others. They don't even answer emails. And I run a, a homeless pro a program here, a large nonprofit. Um, so what we started doing is. Uh, if we're not going to get everybody up here, far too many people, less than less than uh, uh, ten percent of our homeless population is being sheltered permanently. Why don't we start? And what we did, what I did, in a small group of us, what's the bottom rung? Hypothermia, people sleeping outside and dying. It's not even a winter shelter. Let's start talking about a hypothermia shelter, a warming center. Uh, a lot to be said about that. We'll talk about it in another video. Um, it's really just to get people off the street on the, the worst nights. And after several years, let's just talking about, start talking about, um, something the city had recommended that we do. The Homelessness Coordinating Committee, the final report and recommendations in 2017, they de recommended storage, hygiene, laundry, um, uh, programs like that. So we took that ball and ran with it, build a storage program. Finally, when we got this facility, I have a large facility now that we've been, because we really started looking at the problems of housing matters and all the people camping in that region and the difficulty that neighborhood was having and, and all the encampments nearby. So we look at it as a challenge. How do we do things better? How do we think better? How do we build back better? So uh, now that we have this facility, we're offering storage. Um, Let's, the people who come onto this property, they're not allowed to, they commit to not hanging out or camping in this neighborhood. We're trying to reduce the negative impacts of homelessness because there's, we have an apartment cl a co complex uh, off the, across the street. And I'm a little off tr track here, but we, then what, now we're doing as many as 3,000 loads of laundry uh, each year, uh, as many as 4,000 loads, uh, showers, donation materials, electrical charging, and we don't do shelter generally we don't have a food program and we don't have a public restroom but we want to talk about is if you're going to be doing all of this with all of the money and having so little effect all of these professionals earning some so many six figures all of these buildings and they're having so little effect then shouldn't we begin demand that we raise the floor of experience up to something appropriately more clean safe and dignifying for everybody else we want to say yes and yeah we can't change the federal paradigm of housing first we're locked into it everybody wants that money and that's so they reform and they play the game and they they they, they pretend they're housing people and they they want us involved because they didn't build any housing they're spending all the money to try to get us to house people and we're not doing it, right? So it's a failure. Housing first is a dismal failure from San Diego to Se Seattle and all the way up to Salt Lake City. I, I, and, and prove me wrong. So what we need to do, all of us in the middle, not the fringes, we, we appreciate your passion, your politics, your idealism, we appreciate that, but you're not leading with your humanity. We in the middle are Santa Cruz. We are Santa Cruz and we demand something more safe, clear, clean and dignifying for every single person out there. We want to talk about agreement camps that have been very successful. We want to talk, talk about more appropriate, legitimate transitional camps uh, rather than the one that we're seeing right now. We want to see actually a, an appropriate shelter array, if this is shelter, a robust car camping program that includes people in RVs without registrations. We want to minute, we want to focus to the people who are originate here. We don't want people to come from Salinas and kick down the road in Marina all the way finally into Santa Cruz and then they crash land on our street and now we've got to deal with them. That's not, that's not appropriate, but we do have to talk about that too, right? Um, what do we do with the people who are occurring here? Um, uh, of course, people leave Santa Cruz and go someplace else. Uh, we need Funding for warming center, win winter shelter, traditional uh, homeless shelter, um, women's shelter, car camping program, uh, tr uh, sanctuary camp, a transitional encampment where people are working together to build uh, uh, agreements, uh, agreement camps. All I'm, all I'm saying is these all exist already in concept. And we rather than doing what the city is doing is uh, the, the current... Um, 
we should we haven't talked about the current city per, per, paradigm at all the uh cSSO which is the camping services and standards ordinance uh will ban people from sleeping in public places except where homelessness programs are in place. They must either be at uh, 1220 River Street, 35 people, or 75 people at the Armory. These That hasn't even started yet. Or in the Benchlands, again, that, that human dumping ground shithole where people are preying on each other. They're, uh, and, and other than that, they're going to be illegalized. We want agreement camps. We need a community that uh, wants to talk about um, what's appropriate. Isn't it? So the reason the city and the county are doing all this is really because we don't have a story of ourselves anymore. Um, there's a book called, uh, uh, what is it called? The Leftmost City. Look it up. It's The Leftmost City. Progressive politics. 30 years. We, we dominated a, a city council and we had a humanitarian focus. We, did, we don't have a story about ourselves. What, what, what's about to happen is massive uh, building projects. And they're not for many of us. They're for people over the hill with lots of money to come over here. It's going to transform the population. Yeah, the city wants it because the tax revenue is going to go through the roof finally. Most of the housing here, they're locked in. It's grandfathered. People own multiple housing. And, and the city is not getting the tax base it, 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 it deserves for, uh, for a, a, a tourist city like this. So of course they want it, uh, these giant, but who are we? What do we say? Do we have anything to say about people? You know, our compassion is left unserved. The people who we really care about are not being taken care of. Uh, we're letting the polls pull us apart. We're letting the city, because we don't have anything to say as a community, they're just, it's a comedy of errors from saying that they're going to put people camping on Seabright streets and on light industrial areas along the, 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 the uh, and that along the uh, light industrial areas, sidewalks, that was uh, after saying that they were going to put people camping in Moore Creek Park in De La Viega, even uh, adjacent to the, 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 the golf course. It's ridiculous. And that's only because we don't have a, we don't have a say and we don't, know who we are. And I assert we are extremely compassionate, intelligent, creative people. Um, let's stop letting the, 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 the people uh, who are agitating pull us apart and let's devise, I have to end this video, this is way too long, a point of view. And that's what we're leading to. Thanks. Look at some of the other videos that are coming up um and in this series it's just me talking and ranting like this it's very exciting is it i'm brent adams i direct the warming center program warming center program at gmail um warmingcenterprogram.com check it out thank you